Lord, help the poor and needy in this land, in this land. Lord, help the poor and needy in this land, in this land. When we all die together and face a rising sun, Lord, help the poor and needy in this land, in this land. Lord, help the motherless children in this land, in this land. Lord, help the motherless children in this land, in this land. When we all die together and face a rising sun. Lord, help the motherless children in this land, in this land. Lord, help the war-torn people in this land, in this land. Lord, help the war-torn people in this land, in this land. When we all die together, face the rising sun lord help the war-torn people in this land in this land and lord help the refugees in this land in this land lord help the refugees in this land in this land when we all die together and face the rising sun, Lord, help the refugees in this land, in this land. And Lord, help the human race in this land, in this land. Lord, help the human in this land, in this land, when we all die together and face the rising sun. Lord, help the human race in this land, in this land, in this land, in this land. Greetings and welcome to this time of worship with St. Andrew Christian Church. We're glad that you've chosen to spend this time with us today and uh, we hope that you will experience God's presence in this time of worship that we share together. Before we begin, just a couple of reminders. One is that uh, you can get the worship bulletin off of our online worship page and it's, uh, there's a button just below this video. You can click on that and retrieve the, video, or the uh, bulletin there. And also, we'll be celebrating communion later in this service. So if you want to pause the video right now and go and gather the elements you're going to use for this meal, uh, then this would be a great time to do that. Now as we go into this time of worship, may we rejoice because God is present with us wherever we are. May we give thanks because in Christ we are new people. And may we find hope because the Spirit is present with us, guiding us and giving us comfort. It has been our practice over the last several weeks to light this lamp. We light it in memory of the loss of loved ones that have taken place during this time of pandemic. And we also light it in recognition that because of social distancing and isolation, we've not been able to meet as a faith community to mourn together and to celebrate together in ways that help to process the grief associated with those losses. And so this morning we light this lamp in memory of those that we have loved and cared for who are no longer present with us. Now let us join together in singing our opening hymn as we begin to worship God together. Let us sing.
God calls us together in this community of faith, and Jesus invites us to rest in him. Let us open our hearts and our minds to hear God's voice as we worship together. May the peace of God be with you all. And now I invite you to take your phone and text someone who may need to hear a word of peace from you today. Good morning, hello. I am kind of tired. Are you guys tired? I don't really mean sleepy tired. I mean like I'm tired of not being able to do the things I wanna do. A Couple days ago I wanted to have lunch with my friend but it was hot so we didn't wanna sit outside but we didn't know if it was safe to sit inside. I'm tired of stuff like that. I'm tired of not being able to go where I want to go whenever I want to go. But I know that it's really important to stay safe and to keep other people safe. But still, it gets kind of tiring. And I know that you guys are doing fun things, and I've seen people who are really creative and coming up with all kinds of fun things to do. I mean, just like we use Zoom for so many things now, we've had story time on Zoom, right? And I bet you guys have talked to maybe grandparents or other people that you don't get to see on Zoom. But even learning all those new things can get pretty tiring. And there's a word for that, it's called weary. It means like, you're really tired of this stuff. And so sometimes I feel weary, even when I'm in a good mood. Well, in the Bible, Jesus says that when we're feel, feeling weary, we can go to him and he will give us rest. So I think that's a really good thing to remember, that sometimes we're just going and we're doing stuff and then maybe we're kind of complaining and we're weary and maybe we're not taking enough quiet breaks. Maybe we need to just find a way to be quiet and rest in Jesus. So maybe you're resting with your family right now while you're watching this church service. Or maybe you could go for a walk and just be quiet and you could think about God, you could talk to God, or you could just listen. Or you could even take a quiet rest and read a book. One of my favorite things, and you guys have done this with me before, is with the singing bowl. So the singing bowl helps us to be aware and to listen. 
And I've learned, and you'll probably learn, that if we never stop and just listen, it's hard to even know what God might want to say to us or might want to teach us or help us learn if we're not stopping and listening and paying attention. So I'm going to use the singing bowl today, and so you're going to have to be really quiet so you can hear it. And you know, normally what we do is when I make the sound with the singing bowl, we listen, and then when you can't hear it anymore, you raise your hand. Well, it's not going to work through the computer, right? So I'm going to say a short prayer, and then I'll do the singing bowl, and when I can't hear it anymore, I'll kind of figure you can't hear it anymore either, and we'll stop. All right? Okay. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for being here. Thank you for helping us pay attention. Thank you for helping us rest and listen. Amen. As we enter into this time of prayer, I invite you to lift your joys, your concerns, your hopes, and your dreams to God as we pray together. Loving God, in the silence of this morning, we pause to rest in you. Our minds cannot comprehend the mystery of you, but our hearts long to be in relationship with you. We have no idea what this coming week may bring, but we trust that you will be with us and will show us the way. We know that we are in need of your guidance, that there are times when we have ignored a need, when we have forgotten that it is our job to speak out for those who have no power, no voice. So we offer ourselves as we are with all our faults and shortcomings and brokenness. And you shower us with grace and forgiveness. You make us whole once more. Holy One, you have created us and called us into something greater than ourselves. Renew our hearts and re restore our vision. Help us to be the people you have created us to be. Teach us to be bold, Teach us to love more. Teach us to be kind. God, hear the concerns of this community, those we have lifted to you this morning, and those that reside deep within our hearts. And hear us now as we join our voices together in the prayer Jesus taught. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Revised Common Lectionary Gospel reading. It's uh, Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter 11, and it's selected verses from that particular chapter. To what can I compare this generation? It is like children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends. We played wedding songs and you didn't dance. So we played funeral songs and you didn't mourn. For John didn't spend his time eating and drinking and you say, he's possessed by a demon. The Son of Man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks. And you say, he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and other sinners. But wisdom is shown to be right by its results. 
At that time, Jesus prayed this prayer. O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding these things from those who think themselves wise and clever and for revealing them to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has entrusted everything to me. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Let us pray. Take my lips, O Lord, and speak your word of truth through them. Take our minds and fill them with your thoughts. Take our hearts and open them to you and to our neighbors. In Jesus' name, amen. To what can I compare this generation? Who was it that Jesus was speaking to? Which generation, which age group was he comparing to a bunch of children? Was it the old folks? Was it the young adults? Was it the teenagers? The answer is, it was all of them. The word we find translated as generation is often used to refer to all people living in a given time. It wasn't a way of qualifying uh, what he was going to say to limit who it was going to apply to. In fact, it was a way of making this a broad sweeping generalization that applied to everyone who heard it. Today we might have him saying it this way, to what can I compare, y'all? And Jesus didn't wait for a response. Instead, he calls them a bunch of bickering children, children who were changing the rules to the game as they were playing it, children who were more interested in criticizing the other side than completing the game successfully. To understand why Jesus made this comparison, we have to look at the environment that existed prior to Jesus' ministry and during his ministry and continued into the formation of the gospel accounts. It was a time when the land was occupied by a foreign power. It was a time when people felt oppressed and threatened. It was a time when people were asking, who or what will ensure the well-being of me, my family, and my nation? What's the best way to bring about a world where everything is aligned with God's plan and purpose for creation? What can be done to establish a world where promises don't go unfulfilled and virtue unrewarded? What can be done to once again make life meaningful? Some place their hope in the culture around them. Others place their hope in power and wealth and still others place their hope in rituals and practices of their religion. Some of these avenues of hope could stand side by side, but some of them, perhaps most of them, stood in conflict with each other. Like-minded people tended to be drawn together into factions that, uh, f where they found support for each other and where they could attack any other avenue of hope that they felt was in competition or threatened their hope. This reality was at the heart of why some welcomed, some misunderstood, and some outright rejected Jesus and the movement that formed around him. This was the culture that Jesus was addressing in our passage this morning. In one of the parts of this story that the lectionary leaves out, Jesus goes way beyond comparing them to children. He warns them that this constant bickering and fighting will ultimately lead to their destruction. This certainly isn't the Jesus meek and lowly that the old hymn would have us sing about, is it? But then Jesus does an about face. He ends his rant against the people and offers them rest and invites them to take up his yoke. His offer seems a little bit contradictory to me. How about you? Isn't a yoke something that's associated with work, hard work, and not rest? Doesn't it bring to mind images of beasts of burden straining to pull a heavy load? Where's the rest in that? How is that going to solve 
the problem of bickering and fighting? Will they just be too tired to fight anymore? And while it's true that the yoke is associated with hard work, there's more to it than that. One of the things that a yoke accomplishes is that it focuses all of the energy in one common direction. And the yoke also distributes the load among all the animals that are connected to it. That way the burden doesn't fall on just one oxen, one mule, one horse. The people Jesus was speaking to would have understood that. And maybe Jesus was using the image of a yoke to show them a better way to realize their hope for their current well-being and a better future. Several weeks ago, in one of my Facebook posts, I included a picture from a team building event that uh, I participated in a long time ago in what now seems like a completely other lifetime. We were at the Elms Hotel and Spa in Excelsior Springs, and the first activity of the day was for us to climb this climbing wall that was about 30 feet tall, and we climbed in groups of three. But the catch was is that we were each connected by a short length of rope. What that meant was we either all made it to the top or we all failed. It meant that we couldn't be in competition with each other. We had to cooperate with each other if we were going to be successful. And this was the theme that ran throughout the entire day of this team building event. The final activity of the day split us up into two teams. Each group was given a bottle of colored water. One, bottle, one team was given a bottle of red water and the other a bottle of blue water. And we were told that these bottles of water represented the product that we were tasked with taking to market. And our goal was to get our product to market before the other team. Now, to deliver our product, we had to go through a challenge course. And if you've ever been on a challenge course, you know that along the way, as its name implies, there are challenges. In our particular case, those challenges included rope bridges, rope swings, balance beams, and also some riddles along the way that we had to solve before we could progress to the next part of the course. Also, as we navigated through the course, there were resources that we had to pick up to carry with us, things like a piece of rope and a length of two by 12. We weren't told what these things were going to be used for, just that they would be important to our task of delivering our product to market. It took a while to get to the end of the course, but my team was the first to have the market, a wooden platform with a cup in the middle of it in view. But there was a problem. Between where we stood and where that platform was, was a ravine. And we were told in the instructions that we couldn't touch the ground between where we were and that marketplace. So that ruled out the idea of us merely walking down one side of the ravine and up the other to get to that platform. The platform wasn't all that far away from where we were standing, maybe six or seven feet, and we thought maybe we could jump across. But the rule said we had to walk the product across. We couldn't jump. You might be thinking, well, you know, we could have maybe taken the rope, tied it to a branch in the tree, and swung across. But remember, we had to walk the product across that gap. If you remember, I said we picked up some tuba 12, or a tuba 12 on the way, and so we thought, well, surely that tuba 12 was intended to become a bridge that we could span that gap with, and so we started to uh, lay it down, and we discovered that it was about a foot short of reaching the platform, and there was no way to anchor it on our end in a way that could allow somebody to safely walk across. Now, it wasn't long before the other team arrived at the same point we were at, and there we both stood. And we could overhear them as they talked about the same things we did. They came up with the same ideas. They uh, also came to the same conclusions that all of those ideas didn't meet the requirements that we'd been given. We were just about ready to join forces, take our two pieces of rope and tie up the guy who had come up with this particular event and leave him in the woods when he shouted out that 
there had been a change in the demand for our product, that no longer did the market want a red or a blue product, they wanted a purple product. How convenient. We had the components that would allow us to provide this purple product that the market wanted. But it meant we had to join forces. We could no longer be competitors. We had to become collaborators. But even though we understood that we could come up with this purple product between the two of us by mixing our water together, we were still faced with the same problem. We had this gap between where we stood and where this marketplace was. Once again, the solution came from joining forces, from taking the resources that we both had gathered along the way. We could use the two pieces of rope to lash together the two pieces of 2 by 12 in a way that made a secure bridge that would span the gap and somebody could walk across and deliver that product. Problem solved through cooperation, through collaboration. All the energy we had spent competing with, with each other turned out to be wasted energy in the end because we ultimately needed each other to be successful. I don't think, in fact, I'm pretty sure that the person that organized this team building event, I'm pretty sure they didn't have Jesus' invitation to take up his yoke in mind when he created this activity. But I think it captures the essence of what Jesus was trying to illustrate. To what can I compare this generation? Would Jesus' answer be any different for us today? We find ourselves in a social, cultural, and political environment that's similar to the time of Jesus. We have different and competing views on the best way or best person to ensure our well-being, the well-being of our family, and the well-being of our nation. We have different and competing views on God's plan and purpose for creation and how to bring the world into alignment with it. We all want a world where promises are fulfilled and where virtue is rewarded, but we don't agree on how to make that happen. We all want life to be meaningful, but we disagree on what makes it meaningful and how to restore that meaning. And so we divide and we fight and we try to protect our hope against the competing hopes of others. We act like bickering children, and all the while we grow more and more weary from the battle, and still our hopes go unrealized. Once again, Jesus offers us rest and invites us to take up his yoke. He invites us to abandon our personal agendas for his agenda, the agenda of loving God, loving our neighbors, and loving ourselves in the same way that God loves us. He invites us to harness our energy and effort with the energy and effort of others to carry out the mission of God's beloved community, to feed the hungry, to house the homeless, to protect the vulnerable, and to draw those who are isolated and alone into community and give them a place to belong and experience love and mercy and grace. May we be the generation that Jesus compares to himself. Amen.
We share this meal every week, separated but yet together. And we are nourished by this memory of Jesus and his friends who dared to feed those that no one else would feed, who included those that were excluded and shunned and oppressed by society, who heard the cries of desperate people and nourished them with living water and the bread of life. This daring community of Jesus followers yearned for justice and righteousness and embraced those who were searching for acceptance and love. And so our tradition says that when this community gathered with Jesus, he took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he shared it with each one around that table. This bread that symbolizes humanity, broken and whole, aching and energized. And he took this cup of wine and he passed it around the table to all of his friends. This cup that symbolizes a new covenant of love And he said, whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup together, do this in remembrance of me. And so we do. Let us pray. Loving God, in gratitude, we gather as your family, bound to each other in love. May this bread and this cup strengthen our faith, giving us the courage to live our lives for you and for each other as peacemakers and justice seekers. May the blessings of remembrance that this table provides challenge us to renew our commitment to you and to your world. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. We hope that you'll stay connected through the week by visiting our website where you'll find a complete calendar of all the events, uh, also through social media. And if you have the Shelby Next app, you can actually go to the calendar there too. So we encourage you to uh, check the events that are coming up in, in the upcoming week. And uh, also there'll be the Monday morning communique and the newsletter. So plenty of channels where you'll be able to see what's going on in the life of St. Andrew. We hope to see you soon.
Go in peace, go in joy, go in hope, go in faith, because the author of peace, joy, hope, and faith goes before you and with you. Amen.